Hello people of the internet, I'm about the plan and well, while this was supposed to initially be 48 separate videos, I figured that would be too long and while I could talk about the players in depth to give you an idea, I figured that maybe, you know, you could just look them up yourselves. No offence, but um, yeah. So um, I was going to um, do 48 separate and original videos, as I said, but I figured that maybe this would be more concise and that if there are players you're interested in, you could just look them up themselves. So anyway. Um, I'm going to be going over all 48 squads and I'm going to be doing them in order of worst to best. So starting off with 48 and going up straight to number one. So anyway, that's enough. <laughs> I have to get 48 squads done, so let's get this underway. Ranking number 48 is the Solomon Islands and really, yeah, the Solomon Islands, this was kind of, um, I suppose, something most people could see coming when I announced the squads because, uh, well, let's be fair, the Solomon Islands haven't really shook um, the world stage. Uh, at all really. Henry Farodo is the star player as you will see and just for future reference um, yeah I'm pretty sure it's obvious but the star player is marked with a star and the captain is marked with the C. In the case that the captain and the star player are both the same then there will either be just one mark either the captain or the star player to represent both players. Henry Farodo in this case is the star player um, and um, yeah, he has had um, a professional career, which is something that's pretty rare to come by in Solomon Islands football. Um, okay, moving on to number 47, we have Cuba, who have achieved a pretty impressive feat of a quarterfinals finish in 1938. However, they were demolished 8-0 by Sweden in that quarterfinals. So, uh, yeah, not really that impressive. The majority of great soccer players from Cuba are um, pretty hindered by the fact that Cuba has a communist government which prohibits the professional playing of football. The majority of their best players have defected to the United States, such as star player Osvaldo Alonso, who has made over 200 appearances for the Seattle Sounders since defecting to the United States in 2007. Cuba do have some good players, such as Mario Inchausti, who is the captain for this team. I hope I'm pronouncing that name right, by the way. But he has played for Real Madrid, although his career was marred by injury. Uh, Os Osvaldo Alonso, though, remains a star player thanks to the fact that he has proven he is a consistently good player. Uh, 46, we have Jamaica, another CONCACAF member. Wes Morgan is the star player and the captain for this team. The first time we've seen something like this, obviously being the Premier League winner's captain in Leicester City in 2016, that absolutely amazing season, that does help his case. Darren Maddox is also a good striker in the MLS, and Jamaica have qualified for a World Cup, making the group stage once in 1998, but it is their performance in the Continental um, competition of the CONCACAF Gold Cup, where they have made the finals twice in this decade, that um, helps them get above Cuba. Number 45, we have Iran. Now, Iran is a country that, if I do this again, Iran's ranking may change because Iran are slowly getting better at football. Iran have the common problem of Middle Eastern teams not uh, sending their players to play abroad, but thanks to players like Sadar Azmun and Askan Dejaga making the moves to European clubs in recent years, it's possible that we will see Iranian football getting better in years to come. The World Cup in 2018 was proof of that, as Iran were never, never out of the game in any of the games they played, despite playing past world champions Spain and current defending European champions Portugal. So, uh, yeah, number 44, we have Oceania's best team, New Zealand. And, yeah, maybe this is a bit of an unfair ranking, uh, considering who's above them. But I really uh, do feel that because they are in Oceania, it just hurts New Zealand that much. Um, but, yeah, uh, Ivan uh, Vesalic in midfield, uh, I don't know why I'm talking about him. But the uh, star player is Winton Roofer, who is by far the best player New Zealand have ever produced, with maybe the exception of captain Winston Reid. Uh, Winton Roofer played for Werder Bremen from 1989 to 1994, or was it 95? I can't remember, but you can look that up yourself. And Roofer uh, won a Bundesliga and two German Cups with Werder Bremen and was the top scorer in the 1993-1994 UEFA Champions League season. So not a bad career there. And number 43, we have Egypt. And I don't think you even need to know who the star player is. It's obviously Mohamed Salah. Yeah, so I'm not even going to talk about this team. Just uh, have a look. Pause the video if you want. Uh, moving on. Number 42, we have Canada. And um, uh, Canada, um, uh, it was close. I did have a playoff, actually, where I put Trinidad and Tobago, who were initially going to be in this because they had Dwight York. But uh, after looking at it again, I realized that Canada had actually won the CONCACAF Gold Cup, being one of only two teams outside the United States and Mexico to win the tournament uh, in 2000. So, um, yeah, Craig Forrest is both the captain and the starting uh, or the star player, if I remember correctly. 
Um, he has played 263 games for Ipswich Town and uh, games for other English clubs too, with a ma- majority of those being Premier League appearances. He does hold the unfortunate record of being the Premier League goalkeeper who has conceded the most goals in the game with 9 goals when Manchester United played Ipswich Town in the 1995 season. I hope that's right. <laughs> it's tough to remember these statistics, believe me. Uh, Saudi Arabia are ranked 41. Uh, now, uh, as I said before, a lot of Middle Eastern teams have this problem, and it's especially common in Arab Gulf states that are rich in oil, that uh, players usually don't travel abroad because the money is very good in Saudi Arabia, and they're much better staying there rather than trying to risk themselves playing for lower wages in European leagues where they may or may not make it. However, they have produced a somewhat good team. Mohamed al holds a record, I believe, for most international caps of any player for any team. Uh, I'm not sure what that figure is, but it is very high. And star player Yusuf al Um I'm sorry if I pronounced that name wrong, by the way. I really should have looked up how to pronounce these names. I'll get them right for the commentary, though. Don't worry. So, yeah, Yusuf al is a skillful winger and attacking midfielder as well. So, um, yeah, uh, you probably don't know much about these players, but it is a good team, to be fair. And, I mean, they, are, they were historically much better than they are now. Moving on, we've got number 40, Algeria. Now, Algeria are more known for the players that uh, have ended up playing for France who are of Algerian descent. More on them later. Um, But Algeria themselves do have a good team. They were cruelly denied in the 1982 World Cup when um, uh, what was called, I think, the disgrace of Guion. When Austria and West Germany knew that a 1-0 win for West Germany would see them both through to the second round of the World Cup. And Algeria couldn't really do anything about that. So, yeah, they were hard done by. They were a good team. They beat West Germany 2-1. Um, really, first, I think they were the first African team to beat the European team at the World Cup Finals. And uh, West Germany ended up making the final that year. So, you know, who knows where that Algerian team could have gone. Algeria have had some good players, too. And, um, you know, Riyad Mahrez is obviously there. However, the star player is a player whose name I can't remember because it's not on the screen right now. But, uh, yeah, rest assured, he was a pretty good player. I mean, he had to be, obviously. He played for... Uh, no, that wasn't him. Sorry, uh, I'm having trouble remembering the players. But, um, yeah, uh, Algeria have had some very good players. Uh, number 39 is North Korea. And this one might surprise you, but uh, North Korea are... Um, no, well, they were a surprisingly good team. Uh, you uh, Now, this is one uh, team where you probably haven't heard of any of these players, with the exception of star player Jong tae who was actually born in Japan. Uh, um, and that's probably the only reason you've heard of him because he was allowed to have a professional career a lot of these players come from the 1990, or 1966 World Cup squad that finished in the quarterfinals um, and they managed to beat Italy along the way and uh, draw one out with Chile they took a 3-0 lead in the quarterfinals at Goodison Park against um, Portugal but thanks to the legendary performance of one player we'll talk about later um, they ended up losing the game 5-3 Number 38 is Costa Rica. Um, Costa Rica are most known for uh, their quarterfinal appearance at the 2014 World Cup, where they managed to get out of a group of three uh, former World Cup champions in Uruguay, England and Italy, not only doing that, but topping the group with seven points. Uh, Costa Rica have won the CONCACAF Gold Cup a few times, and um, their best player is obviously Keylor Navas, who has had many successful seasons with Real Madrid. The captain Brian Ruiz has played in the Premier League with Fulham, and that's pretty much all I have to say about this team. Number 37 is Australia. And Australia, I suppose you could say, are the OFC's highest ranking team since they were a former member. But they have since moved to Asia, realising that OFC football just isn't good enough for them. The team has done relatively well um, in the AFC. And most recently, they have had great success winning the AFC Asian Cup in 2015. They made the quarterfinals, or sorry, not the quarterfinals, the round of 16 in the 2006 World Cup when they were still a member of the OFC, and they narrowly lost out to eventual world champions Italy, uh, losing to a 94th minute Francesco Totti penalty. Uh, The best player on this team is, I believe, Johnny Warren, and uh, yeah, they have awards named after him and all that. He was a, a huge advocate for Australia joining the AFC and he didn't like the OFC at all thought it was a terrible idea and thought the two conferences should merge and uh, you know what I would probably agree with him moving on number 36 is Ukraine and Ukraine um, now this is something I need to talk about is because Ukraine was formerly part of the USSR so where did all those players who played for the great Soviet teams of the past go 
Well, I had to split them up. So um, the only Soviet players that qualify for this team are those who are either ethnic Ukrainians or are born in Ukraine. Uh, or born in what would be present day Ukraine is what I mean by that. The same applies for Russia and the same applies for Yugoslavian teams. So um, yeah, we'll move on because there's only one of those later on down the line, but we'll get to that. So yeah, uh, Andriy Shevchenko is unsurprisingly the star player on this team, playing many great seasons with AC Milan and uh, eventually moving to Chelsea where it didn't turn out so well for him. But despite that, no one can deny he is an absolutely amazing player and he has recently made a move into Ukrainian politics. So uh, I don't know. I don't know much about Ukrainian politics, but apparently it needed Andrei Shevchenko. And now, a former USSR team, the second of two, Russia. And star player and captain is Lev Yashin, arguably the greatest goalkeeper to ever play football. An absolute beast of a man. I mean, if you've ever seen this guy, if you've ever seen pictures of this guy holding a football, you just see how absolutely fucking huge he is. But anyway, yes, Yashin uh, is the captain and the greatest player for Russia. Um, so that is a pretty big testament to them. They're going to be relying on him a lot, I feel. Uh, 34 is Mexico, and I actually can't remember anything about Mexico, so just have a look at the team sheet. And Mexico are a team I feel like have really underachieved because they have a huge population, a huge interest in soccer, and they are um, a huge, They have um, some very good teams not too far away from them. So, um, yeah, they have underachieved. I think they've made two quarterfinal appearances, and that was when they hosted the World Cup both times. Uh, they have won lots of CONCACAF Gold Cups, um, but um, yeah, uh, really, I think they could have been doing better for the size of the country that they are. Uh, although they were cruelly denied in um, 2014 with the Netherlands and Arjen Robben diving for that penalty. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, 33 is Greece. Now, it might be a bit strange to rank former European champions Greece so low. However, I feel like... Yeah, that is an impressive achievement, and I don't think Greece are a bad team. However, I do think compared to other European teams and other teams in this World Cup in general, Greece just aren't as good. Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, they do have um, some good players. Uh, Vasilis Hatsibaganis is um, probably the greatest player you've never heard of because he attracted interest from West European teams and... Um, uh, it just, for some reason, it just didn't work out for him. I can't remember the full story, but he was a good player. And Traiano Stellas, who was the captain of the 2004 U European Championships winning side, uh, is the captain of this team. No surprises there. 32 is Senegal. And um, centre-back Papa Bupa Diop is the greatest player. And Aliou Cisse is the captain, former, or actually current manager of Senegal. Uh, yeah, so um, they did make the quarterfinals of the 2002 World Cup, losing to 1-0 to Turkey, becoming the um, second African team to do that at the time. Uh, playing a very uh, split formation, <laughs> you're either defending or attacking on this team. But they do have some big names like Demba Ba and stuff like that. So um, yeah, this team I think could provide a few surprises. Number 31 is the United States of America. And uh, yeah, good old US of A ranks ahead of Mexico. Some people might find that a bit controversial. Uh, I don't because uh, the USA have made the semi-finals of the World Cup and the quarterfinals. They have produced some very good players like Clint Dempsey, Landon Donovan, and um, Tim Howard um, and um, Christian Pulisic who is starting in this team. Looks like he could be easily the greatest player uh, the US have ever produced. However, that isn't the case for now because the greatest player in my opinion now is Landon Donovan. Uh, yeah, so um. Uh, that's the United States of America. A uh, bit better at soccer than I had imagined. They have won more CONCACAF Gold Cups than Mexico. So that's uh, pretty surprising, uh, at least to me anyway. Uh, but um, yeah, so the USA ranked 31. Moving on to number 30, and it is Turkey. And Turkey made the semi-finals of both the European Championships in 2008 and the World Cup in 2002. And they haven't been back to the World Cup since that uh, semi-final display. Uh, it is Lefter Kusayokayadis, I don't know, he is of Greek descent, but he is Turkey's greatest ever player, and Arda Turan is the captain, I'm pretty sure you know who he is. So yeah, Turkey uh, are a mix of unknown names because of, um, and you'll find this a lot, that older players generally tended to play domestically rather than leave their countries to play abroad, so um, yeah, it is, uh, you are going to see a lot of players whose names you won't know. Uh, especially when they're older. So yeah, apologies for that, but yeah, if you want to look them up, I mean, I'm pretty sure you're all going to want to look up the Iron Squad anyway, so uh, yeah. Uh, if you want to look up any players, yeah, just do. 
29 is South Korea and Asia's second highest ranking team. It is a bit controversial to have them ranked lower than um, the other Asian team. Uh, but um, yeah, they did make the semifinals of the World Cup um, in 2002 under controversial circumstances. I think it was I think it was a good team. I, I mean, I, I maybe not as good enough, maybe not good enough to make the semifinals, but it was still a very good team. Uh, the star, star player of this team is Cha Bum Kun, though they also have had Son Hyung Min, who still currently plays for them, uh, Park Ji Sung, played for Manchester United, and uh, a few other great players as well. So anyway, the other Asian team, ranked number 28, is Japan. And uh, yeah, so um, why did I choose Japan over um, South Korea? And I think that's down to consistency, the fact that they've won more AFC Asian Cups, and uh, just the amount of players they've produced too. I mean, you know... I mean, South Korea have produced great players, but like, you know, um, Japan have produced, uh, you know, Kagawa, Honda, um, Nakamura, and Nakata, as you can see, as the four attacking midfielders. And Nakata being the, um, uh, Nakata being the um, uh, star player on this team. He retired at just 29 years old, um, which does leave question marks, because like, you know, how good would he be if he didn't retire? But anyway, yeah, um, my favorite thing about this team, and I just want to highlight this for a second, that the center forward, Kazuyoshi Miura, is 51 years old, but he still plays professional football, and he is the oldest ever goal scorer. Um, he plays for, I think, Yokohama FC in the J2 League. And uh, yeah, he recently scored a goal to make him the oldest ever goal scorer in a professional uh, game. So, I mean, that's just, that's just brilliant. That's amazing. 27 is Cameroon. And uh, Cameroon have produced Samuel Eto'o and Roger Mia, two of the greatest ever African footballers. On the bench, we have Joseph Ndo, who was a legend at Sligo Rovers. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, has played at two World Cups as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, Cameroon were the first African team to make the quarterfinals of the World Cup way back in 1990. Uh, and uh, yeah, they lost narrowly in extra time, 3-2 to England. But uh, yeah, um, they are ranked... I suppose you could say they are ranked a bit low, but there are two more African teams ahead of them that I felt were just a bit more, uh, just just either that much better or that much more consistent than Cameroon. Twenty six is one of those African teams, Nigeria, and yeah, so uh, Nigeria have um, are one African team or one just like non European team in general that have had to send a lot of their players abroad. So you would know about them even if they are from a while ago. Uh, and I feel like that's because, you know, obviously the infrastructure in um, a lot of African countries isn't that great. So the professional players stand a better chance playing in Europe. Uh, yeah, so JJ Akocha is the star player. Um, you might have heard of him, might not have heard of him. He um, was a legend with Bayern Munich, I think. So, uh, yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, I got a good pedigree there. Um, uh, 25 is Colombia. And uh, Colombia... Um, have had James Rodriguez, Radamel Falcao, and a few others. Though a lot of their best players, like you will find with a lot of South American teams, uh, have played domestically because they are from a while back. But uh, yeah, they are most known for their quarterfinal appearance in 2014, where a lot of their best players come from. Um, 24 now, and this is the best African team in my opinion, Ghana. So yeah, Ghana, um, I remember watching the team that qualified for the... Um, quarterfinals of the 2010 World Cup cruelly denied with that Luis Suarez handball um, yeah so um, that was heartbreaking to watch uh, I mean really made me hate Luis Suarez <coughs> yeah, sorry but yeah anyway Ghana have had a seriously good team Abedi Pele won the Champions League with Marseille in um, 1993 and that makes him the best player on this team uh, and Michael Essien I think is captain or is Kofour Samuel Kofour who played as a centre-back with Bayern Munich, winning the Champions League with them. And they have a, f a seriously good um, few uh, Champions League winners on this team, obviously with Michael Essien as well being on this team, and uh, Sully Montari. So uh, yeah, Ghana, I, I really root for this team. I hope it does well, and I feel like it can. I feel like they have the ingredients to get out of the group and hopefully push on further in the tournament. 23 is Peru, and uh, yeah, Peru might seem a bit odd, but they have got uh, a few good players. Claudio Pizarro is the all-time leading goal scorer uh, for a non-German player in the Bundesliga, so that's very impressive, actually. Um, he played with Chelsea as well, but that's a little less impressive. Um, the all-star player or star player is Teofilo Kubiles, uh, played in the 70s, was part of the uh, Peru team that made the 1978 World Cup uh, second round. Is when the World Cup operated a little differently. 
Um, yeah, so um, a Peru are, are an underrated team, in my opinion. Another underrated team, in my opinion, is number 22, Romania. Uh, Romania have had Georgia Hagi, who probably stands out as the star player. And, I mean, that's why I picked him. He played for Barcelona, I believe. And, uh, yeah, the um, problem with the Romanians is that, that um, yeah, they've had a lot of good players, but um, the communist rule in the country prevented a lot of the players from going west and proving their talents in much better leagues. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's something you're going to see a lot, and especially with uh, number 21, Bulgaria. Uh, Bulgaria, another former communist country, but they have made the semifinals of a World Cup and had top scorer Hristo Stoichkov at the US 94 World Cup. Uh, yeah, so they've got uh, Stoichkov, obviously, the star player. Uh, they've also got Dimitar Berbatov and Georgia Yasparuhov, who um, was voted Bulgarian Player of the Century. Uh, um, uh, but uh, I have picked Hristo Sojkov just because he has a better pedigree. Um, and uh, Yastilian Petrov as well. So yeah, this is a very good team, a very underrated, probably the most underrated team in my opinion at the World Cup, or at this World Cup. Uh, and I, I would like to see them do well. And number 20, we have uh, Northern Ireland, or uh, as the rest of the world calls it, Northern Ireland. Uh, yeah, so they've obviously George Best is their best player. Uh, just outstanding, one of the greatest players of all time, in my opinion. And I mean, like they have a seriously good team, to be fair, uh, and they are seriously going to challenge us uh, for that third spot in Group D. And uh, 19 is Wales, and Wales are a team that has seriously underperformed. I mean, you know, you look at the quality of players they've had, and, uh, uh, you know, John Charles is probably the player you've heard the least about in this team, but he is the best player because he was able to play as a centre-back and a centre-forward. He was just incredibly versatile and incredibly good wherever he played in the field. But they've also got Bale, Giggs, Rush, Gary Speed, you know, just so many good players. And, um, yeah, I mean, they're really, I think they'll do well at this World Cup too. And number 18, we have the glorious homeland, uh, the Republic of Era. And it's just a fantastic team, to be honest with you. I mean, this team makes me cry. Just seeing what we have now and looking at this, like, there's no comparison, really. Um, <laughs> yeah, with uh, Roy Keane being the star player, Paul McGrath, the captain, Ronnie Whelan, John Giles, Liam Brady, uh, fucking Dennis Irwin. I mean, Seamus Coleman is the only current player in the squad. And I feel like, you know, that's just depressing. It makes me cry, but I mean, I think we're going to do well. I think we can beat Northern Ireland, and I think we can challenge the Netherlands and France. Shit, I wasn't supposed to talk about those teams yet. Moving on. 17 is Denmark. And Denmark have had, a, I mean, aside from Christian Eriksen, Michael Laudrup is the star player I've picked for the squad. Uh, played for Barcelona Dream Team of the early 90s that won the Champions League. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about Denmark. Chile at number 16, and um, Arturo Vidal is the star player. Um, and uh, yeah, so they've had a lot of good players who played in Europe. Um, and uh, I feel like uh, they are a little bit underrated, but uh, still, people won't take them lightly. 15 is Croatia, and this was the team, Yugoslav team I was talking about. So yes, um, in terms of player, what players from Yugoslavia would play for Croatia, it's ethnic Croats and players born in Croatia. Uh, so yeah, uh, Luka Modric still is the star player. And um, the captain is Bobek. So, um, yeah, there's um, been a semi-final appearance, a third-place finish at the 1998 World Cup, and obviously runners-up in the 2018 World Cup. Um, so they are a seriously impressive team that will look to challenge any team who comes up against them. 14 is Poland. And while, uh, yeah, this is probably the most uh, a team of just unpronounceable names, uh, star player is Big New Boniek. Um, is uh, um, so he's um, he played for Juventus in the 80s, uh, part of a very good team, and um, uh, captain is Robert Lewandowski. 13, we have Belgium, and Belgium are very notorious for being the only Belgian team at this World Cup. Um, I can't really tell you much about them. And uh, well, that's all I have time for today. I'm going to do the last 12 squads in a separate video, and uh, yeah, uh, because of that. Uh, I'm going to have to see you next time. So for the top 12 squads, um, hold out for me. Uh, I've been around the plan. Thank you for watching my videos. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in the next video.